Hi there, my name's Vince from mrtelephone.co.uk and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can attach three extension sockets onto the one NTE5 master socket. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos or you're, you know a bit about telecoms, you'll know that the wires terminate onto these little IDC terminals and the idea of these terminals is that you can nice and easily just punch the wires in using the punch down tool. The downside of them is you can only attach two wires per slot. So pretend this is the metal V inside the IDC terminal. One wire goes in and it makes a connection no problem because it cuts the plastic and touches the copper on the inside of the wire. The next wire goes in and it still cuts the plastic and makes the connection on top of the wire. But when the third wire goes in, it's not big enough to, the, the metal V is not big enough to cut the plastic to touch the copper on the inside. So some people crush the wires right down and sometimes you can get that connection on the third wire, but it's always an iffy connection and anytime you knock the box, it's very easy for that wire just to come a little bit loose. So the rule is you only put two wires in each IDC terminal, but this can be a problem because you might want to run three wires from the master socket. Now, if you had loads of extensions, then you wouldn't want to be cramming more and more in here. You would just fit something like a BT78 next to the master socket and I've done a video on these already, so you can attach numerous extension cables onto this and then just have the one wire from here into the master socket. But let's say if you're just, it's a bit of an oversight and you've already got two extensions in your house and you just want a third one. So pretend that this one is going to the back room, the master socket's in the hallway and this one's going to the front room and you want one going to the office upstairs. Now, if it's just one more, what you can do is you can use these little jelly crimps to extend the wire. So what you would do is you would connect two extension wires onto one short bit of jumper wire and connect that jumper wire up to the front plate and you would use these jelly crimps to basically turn two wires into one wire. So I'll quickly show you that now and it will make sense as I go through the video. So pretend now that this black cable is the main cable from outside feeding the master socket and then like I said you've got two cables and you want to run a third extension from the office into the master socket. So what you need to do is you need to undo the front plate of the master socket and gently slide that out and as you can see in there we are full because we've already got two wires and if you can zoom in and see that we've got two wires in each of the IDC slots so we can't punch the third wire in so that's no good but if you follow this video now, you will be able to get three wires connected. So all you do is get your crone tool with the hook on it, or use a small little screwdriver to hook the wires out. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave we're going to leave the bottom wire connected, and we're just going to remove the top wire in each of the slots. Okay, so. At the moment we've got two cables here, we've got a Cat5e cable which is this white fat cable and we've got a little two pair telephone cable which is this thin cable here. So right now I've disconnected the two pair telephone cable which is this one here and the Cat5e is still connected. So we're going to cut the old cable tight, being, being careful not to actually cut the wires themselves. Now. You've run this wire from the office upstairs into your master socket location. So that you put it through whatever hole's convenient for you, whichever hole makes sense, because these master sockets have a lot of knockouts that you can just knock out and put the wires in, or you can put them through the back, the bottom, the side, they've got knockouts everywhere. So what we're gonna do is we need to get some spare wire to have like a little bit of jumper wire to join the existing, sorry, to join the new extension and the existing extension onto the one wire. So get your drawstring and get yourself a nice bit of uh, nice bit of cable. That should be enough. Get rid of the sheath and the drawstring. Now we're only going to need about two to three inches to actually terminate. So the rest of this wire here is now spare. And what we're going to do is, we're not going to get our existing two pair wire and our new extension going up to the office. And let's make them the same length to make it nice and neat. 
and also cut off the bits that were already terminated. So when a wire has been terminated, it's best just to cut back onto fresh wire because it's already been it's already been cut there. So it's best just to start again start again on fresh wire. So that's cut back now on fresh wire. We don't need the white and orange because it doesn't do anything. That's the one that's normally connected to number four. So we're only worried about the blues, which is terminal two, the oranges, terminal three, and the white, blue, terminal five. So let's start with the blues. So we want to join these two blues onto a new blue here. And then we will connect this to the front plate. So then we'll only have two connected on the actual IDC on the front plate of the master socket. But this wire will then become live, which will in turn liven up both these blues. So we're using these little jelly crimps. These are three-way jelly crimps. I've already done a video on them, so I'm not going to go into much detail because you can check out my video where I explain how they work. But basically, you need to put one wire in each hole. So it's got three holes. So you need to put the wires in like that, one in each hole. And they need to go right the way to the end of the jelly crimp. So if you zoom in there, hopefully you can see that. Can you see them hitting the end there? They need to go to the very end. Okay? Don't crimp them like that or with one short because it won't make a good connection. All three must go to the end. Also, don't put two in the one hole because sometimes you see people do this. And it may make a connection, but it's not as good as having, because it may not make the connection, or also it's, uh, it's not going to be a clean connection. So make sure that each wire goes into its own hole. Then you get your jelly crimping tool, and nice and simply, you just crush down the lid like that. Okay, now, if you haven't got a jelly crimping tool, and this is just a one-off job, you can use pliers by working your way around the crimp but you will have to crimp it a few times because the jelly crimping tool is designed with a cutout in it like, like that so it just crimps down in one go because the distance between here and here is the actual distance of the crimp while with the pliers obviously they come to a, a complete close so you have to work your way around to make sure they crimp all over okay so that's the blues now let's do the same with the white blue Each wire in its own hole, wires to the very wires to the very end, and crimp down. Give them a little tug to make sure they're all connected, which they are. And now we'll do the same with the orange. Wires in the very end and crimp down. Okay. Now, just give them a little clean up because this gel is to make it waterproof when they're using the outside network. But obviously, this is inside; they don't need to be waterproof. But you will still be using the same crimps. The problem with the gel is it gets everywhere and makes everything a little bit messy. So, it's just like kind of like a Vaseline type stuff. Okay, so that's it now. So we've now turned two cables into one lot of wires again. So this blue wire here has now livened up these two blue wires. This white blue wire has livened up. In other words, they're all together. So whatever is on this wire will also be on the other two blue wires. So they're all connected together. The same as if you were to strip them back and twist them all together, but this is just a, a nice, neat, proper way of doing it rather than just twisting them together. Okay, so we've got our front plate here. We're gonna try and cable tie all three sheaths together. When you're cable tying, it's always best to go onto the actual sheath rather than cable tying the wires because the, the connection is not as good and you can damage the wires if you cable tie onto them. So if you have a look there now, I'll snip off the tail. You can see that. All three cables are now cable tied nice and securely. Move the jelly crimps out of the way and just connect these up like you would do any normal wire. So that's going to be blue to two. Again, when you're using the crimping tool, don't leave these out because you can have a habit of punching down like that and it will stab you. So always close 
both these when you're working with them. And the cutting blade goes this way in. So it cuts the excess wire. You can see that if you zoom in. So there you go, it cuts the excess wire there. So that's the blue one done into terminal two. Orange to terminal three. And the white blue to terminal five. Now what I forgot to mention is when you take off the faceplate to begin with, make a note of the wires. Don't just copy me, you need to copy what's already there. So for example, if your cable is the very old cable or also the recent cable that BT use, which would be uh, blue to two, orange to five, and green or uh, brown to three, well then you would need to copy that. So in this case, I've used all the same color wires but you need to do whatever you've got there. So for example, if they've used an external cable, it might be a white and orange. So it might be white, orange, green, and black, just like the drop wire cable. So if they put white to five, then you need to keep that white on five. And when you add your new cable, you will be piecing white to white blue, and then the jumper cable will be white blue, or whatever you choose to use. If they've put uh, orange to, if they've put orange to two, if it was an external black cable, then Orange still needs to go to two, and then your new cable will likely be orange white. Sorry, to two, I'm getting confused now, it would be blue white, and then your jumper cable would be blue white. So always make a note of what of how it was beforehand. So it's all nice and easy when all the same colour codes are used, but you're going to be dealing with wires that could be 20 or 30 years old. You might be dealing with a wire that's two years old, so you don't know the age of your wires. So always take a picture and a good note of how the wires are because then you know you can put it back to how it was if you make a mistake. So now the hard bit here is actually trying to cram all this lot back into this tiny space here. So what you need to do is try to find a little home for the jelly crimps in the back box. So if you kind of flatten them away there See, now you can see that once they're tucked away up there, or over here, or up here, they're kind of more out of the way, so you've got more chance of closing this lid. And you will find there is more resistance there now, because there's more being crammed into it. But if you have a look in, that's what it's going to be like there. Yeah. So you just uh, push it back in like that, and then you get your little screws, screw it back in and then you'll have all three extensions connected to the front plate in the proper manner. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. They're all, uh, even those little jelly crimps use little IDC connections on the inside. So even these jelly crimps here, when you take the lid off them, they've got a little IDC connection. So it's hard to see, but they're all little Vs that the wires get punched into. Yeah. So it will work fine, and it's a, it's a common thing that BT engineers do. As well, let's say now if you're doing a bit of rearranging, and the cable going in here is just a little bit too short, because you might have slightly moved the master socket, and then the cable will no longer extend into this front plate, which is really common, because there's not enough slack on the cable. So what you can do is, in that case, just use these little two-wire jelly crimps, because if you look closely, this is the three-wire that we've used in the video, but this one here is a two-wire, and there's quite a size difference. So if you're just wanting to want, if you just want to extend the cable by a little bit, then you can see that these little two wire ones take up less room. So that's really handy. They're handy to use because then if your cable can just about get inside the back box, you can just crimp on three of these onto your three wires and just extend out the wires as long as you want because you're using spare wire then and then that gives you the slack because there's nothing worse than when you pull this off when there's so little slack you can't work and every time you look at it more and more wires fall out. So uh, by using jelly crimps to piece them out it really helps you. So hopefully you found that video useful. If you like it please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please check out my channel for more how-to videos. If you want things like jelly crimps and the cable and stuff when you have time check out my shop, that's www.mrtelephone.co.uk and that will link you to my eBay shop. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Take care, thanks very much. Bye now.